people say is going to be very important. It might be the first thing they say. It might be the last thing. But if you're not paying attention, you might miss it because it could be in the middle. And it might just go, <laughs> blow your mind. Okay? All right, here we go. Here's the first thing that's going to blow your mind. You guys are going to be seniors next year, right? Can you believe it? <laughs> Secondly, you're going to start hearing this from us. Graduation is not guaranteed. You have to earn graduation. We are not going to just hand you your diploma if you don't meet the graduation requirements. So keep that in mind as you're deciding if you want to do your homework or study for your tests. Um, so I'm going to first of all kind of explain the process that we're using this year. We are going to have you guys electronically input your elective choices. Um, so let's see, Mr. Hines, tell me if I'm wrong. Tomorrow in community, you guys are going to go through an I-step practice for math and English because a lot of you have to retake it. And if you don't know, that's starting the 26th of February, you're, the next time you're going to take I-STEP. Um, Thursday, you are going to go through an elective PowerPoint in your individual community classrooms. There's going to be a sheet that your teachers are going to hand out, and you're going to mark on there, just for your reference, the electives that you want to take. The next week, we're going to meet with you guys in computer labs, and that's when you need to make sure you bring your laptops, too, because there's not enough computers for everyone. And we are going to have you open PowerSchool and actually choose your classes in there. Then we will also, as always, have our individual meetings with you guys, and we'll kind of tweak that and make sure you have everything in place to go. Any questions about that? Am I missing anything? If you know your PowerSchool login, bring it. Um, otherwise, we will give it to you guys. We have them attached to your um, scheduling sheet. So hopefully you guys know this at this point. How many credits do you need to graduate? 42, very good. <laughs> OK. That was kind of scary that some of you said 40 or 41. but. 42 gr credits to graduate in Frankfurt Community Schools. You must pass your classes to earn your credits. If you guys have not passed or multiple of these, you're going to be getting, as always, an early summer school letter. You're also going to get a May master letter since you guys are juniors and er a regular summer school in June. If you have more than one credit or even one credit to make up, this is going to be your easiest way to do this. I know you guys do not want to stay after school in April but it's something that you need to consider also May and June because we, we haven't done the master schedule for next year. We don't know how many teachers are going to be able to do credit recovery. Um, so credit recovery, I know you guys think, oh, I'll go into credit recovery, it'll be so easy. It's not guaranteed that we're going to have space for you guys to do that. So you need to put on your calendars and put in your minds that you need to come to early summer school, May master, and regular summer school to make those credits up if you're missing some. Um, just a reminder, you guys are going to have four years of English, so obviously you'll be in English 12. Math, you have to have three years in high school for your Core 40 diploma. So if you started in Algebra 2 your freshman year, we need to make sure you earn six total credits in this building for math. Science, ICP or chemistry or physics, biology, and then you're going to have two more science credits. So if you guys do not have science this year in your schedule, we'll have to make sure that you have it next year, two different credits of science. Next year you'll have government, government and econ, and you guys have already done your PE and health. And then of course we have the electives. Down here. Okay. English, we're going to have recommendations from your teachers. Um, you'll be in English 12 Honors, English 12, or, P, or AP Lit. As always, you guys have government and econ. You do have the choice to do AP government. Um, we will get recommendations from current uh, social studies teachers and then Mr. Seymour as well. Science classes, when you guys choose your electives, we'll also have slides on each of the science classes so you can go through and review those. 
If you're gonna go to like an engineering or medical or anything like that, you need to make sure you're taking more than just the required science classes, um, especially the chemistry, AP chemistry, if you wanna get into the medical field. And we'll talk to you guys about that individually. Again, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, Pre-Cal, AP Calc or AP Stats. And we will talk about that, you guys, individually. Um, this just explains what I have already said about your credits. If you guys are interested, there's also opportunities for internships next year, which are great. Um, you have the opportunity to do a CDL class, so you could earn some of your license, I guess, to drive a truck. Lots of different things, so make sure that you're considering wisely and choosing wisely. Of course, you guys have the CTE programs, um, CNA, just like this year. We're not doing fire and rescue next year. We have EMT, building trades, cosmetology, criminal justice, all that good stuff. So remember that as you choose your pathways. Mr. Cantlett's gonna talk about pathways for you. So, <clears throat> Pathways, we have a number of pathways in a lot of different areas. Pathways are something that have just recently come up. You're gonna get a little bit of the effect of it um, because it is an alternative path to graduation without the I-STEP. Um, a lot of you guys are retaking I-STEP. We will have waivers available for I-STEP as well. Um, but pathways may be another way that we can get to graduation without without the I-STEP. So that may be something that we'll talk with you guys more about individually. A pathway essentially is six credits in a college career area. We have a number of pathways. So you guys all should have filled out a pathway um, completion form for classes that you have already taken, um, pathway related. And so if you're close to some of these, we may move you into a pathway so that we can look at, again, alternative um, graduation paths um, outside of I-STEP. So we'll talk more about these as we get into your individual meetings, uh, but they're definitely things that you wanna keep in mind and thinking about. We talked about Core 40 diploma and how many credits and what those entail. The academic honors requires 47 credits, so you need two additional math credits um, and that's where if you took algebra or geometry and or geometry at the middle school, that's where we can go back and use those credits. So you have to have six here in the high school and then we can go back and use algebra and geometry um, for the academic honors diploma or you need to continue taking, um, if you need AP courses, you need to continue taking AP calculus or AP stats. Uh, you need six world language credits and two fine arts credits, a C or better in all of your classes and a GPA of 3.0 or better two AP classes or two, or two dual credit classes or one AP and one dual credit for the academic honors. The technical honors um, is where you guys have heard some mention of pathways prior to because for the technical honors you have to have pathway courses, um, a C or better in all of your classes, 47 total credits and a GPA of 3.0 or better. Okay, so I-STEP is your required um, graduation exam. Um, like we talked about with Pathways, there may be an alternative, but you do need to focus on doing the best that you can on I-STEP. We have, um, like we talked about, an I-STEP um, kind of practice thing that you're doing during community. Tomorrow, uh, you'll take I-STEP again starting on 27th. Um, again this year, and then you'll also have opportunities next year for I-STEP as well. If you fail either portion, um, you know, we'll also work towards waivers. I guess I should have talked about this. Um, just because there are opportunities for waivers does not mean you should blow off the I-STEP. We can only give a certain number, a certain percentage of you guys' waivers. Um, so you still need to take this very seriously. Ideally, you will pass the I-STEP, 
but these other pathways and then the waivers are kind of your plan B. Um, so please do not go into the I-STEP test thinking, eh, it doesn't matter if I pass this, um, because it, it really does. It is your easiest path to graduation. Uh, we talk about summer school. We have early summer school, May semester, and regular summer school. Um, if you are short on credits, we will be talking about those. Uh, early summer school in May semester and even regular summer school to some extent is also an opportunity, like right now is a time that you guys need to start looking at and thinking about college choices. Um, if you want to go to college, where you want to apply to college, you need to start really looking at your transcript and your GPA and determining um, do you need to do anything more to improve your GPA. So early summer school and May semester, when we have your individual meetings, if you want to look at improving some grades in, some, in certain classes, that's the time to do it. Okay, so you'll want to talk to us and make sure that you mention that to us as well when we have your individual meetings. And then remember to pick your courses wisely. Make sure that you pick 15 classes with at least three alternates. When you do the sheets, we're going to ask you to pick your first choices. So you'll want a total of 15 credits for your first choice classes. Um, but also remember, English, government, and econ are already factored into those, those areas. So then we're going to ask you on the sheets to pick six alternates. But when we go into the computer, you're only going to put three into the computer for the computer to use as alternates. Um, we'll begin meeting with communities next week. And then we will not be making schedule changes once we start the school year. Um, Oh, yeah. So CNA, EMT, um, construction trades, criminology, and cosmetology are all of our off-site classes. When you look at those classes, and if you're interested in those classes, um, some of them we have a whole lot of space. Others, if we max out, we have to, we have to look at different criteria. So your GPA is going to factor in. Your attendance is going to factor into decisions about these classes. So you want to keep that in mind as we finish out this school year. If your attendance hasn't been stellar, you want to make sure that your attendance and that you're attending um, here because that may factor into whether or not you get placed in any of these off-site classes. Um, and then also, again, looking at GPA, there are opportunities for you guys to improve your GPA if necessary. A lot of times, depending on the class, like CNA criminology, um, we really look at a 2.5 um, is kind of our average, 2.5 or better. Uh, but that does not mean that if you have lower than a 2.5, you shouldn't apply. It just means that that's kind of where we look because they are heavily academic-based cor um, courses, and they are college level. So you're getting dual credit in, in those classes. The only thing I want to add is that we've been working really hard to give you guys opportunities to take more ownership in your graduation progress. So in community over the last year, you guys have been doing your transcript checks and checking your grades. It's really important that you know how many credits you have, how many credits you need, what classes need to be made up. And those are things you should be aware of. So you shouldn't be surprised when you get a summer school letter because you should, excuse me, you should already know if you have failed a class and that there's something that you need to make up. So again, you guys can access you know, your grades on PowerSchool, you know, pay attention to your credits, and we just want you to be aware of where you are so that you can be actively you know, participating and making sure that you have what you need for graduation. SAT. Juniors, if you are college bound, we recommend you take the SAT in May. So the one that's here at Frankfort High School is May 5th. Um, you can sign up for that now up to probably about a month ahead of time. We'd like you to, to make sure you get signed up. If you wait too long, there are late fees, um, or you could even potentially miss the opportunity altogether. So juniors, don't wait and come in in your senior year in, in October and tell us you, that you still haven't taken the SAT and then you're panicking. So we're telling you now, take the SAT in May, okay? And then if you need to take it again in the fall, you can, but that lets you know where your scores are. Like Mr. Cantlin said, as you start looking at colleges, 
because now is the time to be doing that. You need to know what their requirements are, where your scores are, you know, in relation to what you need to get into that school. Does that make sense? Questions about that? Okay. Anything else anyone wants to add? Um, you also have opportunities. If you don't get the May date, there are some June and July dates for both the SAT and ACT, um, and you do have either one of those options available to you. Uh, we oftentimes, if you can do it, we oftentimes suggest that you take it at least twice. So like Mrs. Sixon said, don't wait until the fall to come in and take it um, because now you're, you're kind of trapping yourself into taking it one time. Uh, there are also some SAT and ACT dates in August um, and the deadline to sign up for SAT and ACT is always a month in advance of the test. So like that August date, you're gonna have to sign up in July. We will not be back to school. So you'll wanna keep these, these things in, in the back of your mind or in the front of your mind um, as you start thinking about if you wanna go to college, this SAT or an ACT um, are things that you want to definitely get in and take. And we can answer more questions about that during your individual meetings as well. Hi guys. I'd like to see some heads go up. Scheduling, I, in my opinion, is one of the most important things that you're going to do um, in, the ne in the coming weeks. I know you have final exams that are coming up, but I truly believe that this scheduling process is extremely important for you. And so some of you that are, are maybe not super, you know, I know it's not a lot of fun. It's not like real sexy information to hear about this stuff. It's not like, man, yay, yay, rah, I love this stuff. Like, it's not, it's not, but it's really important. And so the things that I want you to be thinking about is next year or senior, you, after your senior, you got you got decisions to make, right? I mean, are we going to college? Are we going to the career career path? Are we going to the military? What are we doing? And and that's a scary thought. Is anybody I mean, is anybody concerned about that in in your mind? Like, what is my next plan going to be? There's some people say kind of. I see some head shake in different ways. It's scary. I, I'm an adult, and there are times where I wonder, am I in the the career path that I should always be in forever? I don't know. I don't know that. But the most important thing for you is to make sure that you're making decisions for next year that give you options, good options, to set you sel yourself up in the future for success. So for example, our tractor trailer program that we have here, we started it two years ago. Last year was our first class that finished. We had three kids. This year we have four kids in it. I can tell you that every single industry in the state of Indiana is desperate for a truck driver. Now, most people don't grow up saying, I want to be a truck driver. It just doesn't happen. But I can tell you that if you want a job immediately out of high school that pays really, really well, that's a great occupation to go into. But again, as a high school student, that's not sexy. Nobody wants to be a truck driver, right? But I'm telling you, if you're thinking to yourself, I don't know what I want to do, but I know I want to make some good money, and I want to give myself some options, that is a great program to go into. We had a senior, a, a kid that just graduated last year that decided he wanted to work on the lines, like electrical lines, want to be a lineman. So he's an apprentice. He went through a CDL program, has a CDL, immediately made more money than a, a, a person that walked out of high school without a CDL. That is a good program. A CNA is a great program to get into. Automatically gives you a door open to the medical field. So even if you're gonna go to college for the medical field, a CNA is a great option because it can give you other options of an ideas of, do I wanna be a doctor, do I wanna be a pharmacist, do I wanna be a nurse, what do I wanna go into? That's just two of our programs. Our business department is fantastic. There are so many different options in here. You really need to think long about this, talk to some friends, talk to your family, and make a very wise decision because your next year is really gonna set you up for post high school. A lot of you, first of all, raise your hand if you know what your GPA is. Raise your hand if you know your GPA. Okay, if you are not raising your hand, you need to figure that out. There's a lot of kids that come into our office and say, I wanna be a, I wanna be a veterinarian. It's a great example that I hear a lot. And their GPA is a 1.5. Now, you can chuckle about that, and I, I'm not trying to make light of it. I'm just saying we got to be educated about what we're making decisions on. If you want to be a veterinarian, your GPA needs to be way up there. 
or you need to take a different path to being a veterinarian. You need to know what your GPA is, you need to know how many credits you have, and then make sure that your decisions are matching whatever that is, okay? What GPA do you probably need to get into uh, Ivy Tech? What kind of GPA would you say? 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, what would you guys say? 2.5-ish, typically, okay? Got to graduate, 2.5-ish. They, they'll take a variety of different, depending on your situation, they may take you at lower than that or, high, I mean, obviously, definitely higher than that, but you got to go talk to them. What about a state school, like Indiana State, Ball State, Purdue, IU? 3.0. A 3.0. If some of you have some work to do to get there, you need to come talk to your counselors and we can see what we can do to make up some of the classes you didn't do so well your first beginning of your years. If you don't have that and you're in the 1.0 range, we need to be thinking about careers, most likely for now. And maybe think about college later if that's what you want. Okay? College isn't for everybody. We never have preached that message. College is not for everybody. But make sure the path that you're choosing is something that fits you. And, and the good thing about paths are if you find something that you don't like, great. You didn't spend money later learning that in life. Okay? So if you have questions, use these three people. They're here. Ask a lot of questions. Come to us. Ask your community teachers. Ask questions. Make a very educated decision when you're scheduling. Are you all with me? That was weak. Are you all with me? Yes. One more thing. You guys should all have the curriculum guide was sent to your um, device. So right on your desktop, you should have the brand new curriculum guide. So if you want to start looking through all the electives or reading details about any of those off-campus programs, CNA, you know, how many um, of your spots it's going to take and some of the GPA requirements to get into those, you guys have all that information right now so you can start planning and preparing. That's it. One more thing. Oh, one more thing. If you want to do any of the off-campus courses, the CNA, the EMT, um, criminal justice, those are all going to take up six spots in your schedule, okay? And we'll walk you through how to select those courses, but they will take up six spots in your schedule, so you want to plan accordingly. Um, foreign language, if you're on academic honors track and you still need three years of a foreign language or six total credits, you need to make sure that you plan for that as well. Um, cosmetology takes up nine total spots. So that is different than any of the others. So you'll need nine total spots. You guys have a great day. We'll see you next week.